Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be previewing the IHF Women's World Championship Playoffs here with our friend CB from Game Day Hockey. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel as well as follow her on Instagram and Twitter. All the links will be down in the description below. But if you haven't already, what she does, she has a bunch of PWHL content, so be sure to subscribe. Really, really good stuff from her. And we want to thank you for coming on to the channel today. And we'll start it off here, CB, with, you know, one of the biggest sort of things that are going on here. And that's going to start off here with the game between Switzerland and Finland. It's going to be a good yeah. game. Which sort of players are you going to be looking for in this one to really sort of take that next step and push their team to victory here? Yeah, this is a very interesting matchup um, for sure, because, you know, this could realistically whichever team wins this we're thinking might go on and, and face the checks for the bronze medal if everything sort of goes to script but um both teams have struggled a little bit more than maybe we expected so i'm um, not looking at the obvious player for for the teams but i'm gonna pick captain lara stalder for switzerland um she's had a relatively quiet tournament but she is the leader um and you know um Alina Mueller needs to show up as well, but I think without Stalder, Switzerland is not going to fare well against the Finns. So she's kind of my X factor pick for their their game. And if they go on, they, they're they going to need a little bit more from her. Yeah, for sure. And we look at it, right? Two goals out of the three that Switzerland scored at this tournament. So when you look to a team that's sort of struggling to put up offense, you got to look to their key players. Alina Mueller's one, Lars Stoller's the other. And I think that's those are like the key, key players you got to look for. And now let's talk about Finland. You know, they came off an early an early upset against the Czechs, losing four to nothing on that opening game. And they sort of just seemed to not find it until they played the Swiss, sort of looked a little bit better. But still, you know, they're a team that's trying to find their way in this tournament. Well, who are you looking for on their team to really sort of step up and lead the way? Yeah, they're a dangerous team. Like you said, they didn't play well against the Czechs, but I don't see that as, you know, um, you know, eliminating them from continuing to do well. I think they're gaining steam a little bit, and I don't know if this is like an X factor, but I think Yeni Hirokoski, the legend, the all-time great, um, she had pretty much a point per game in the Swedish league this past season and the season before um, at her age. She doesn't look like she's lost very much, and she is definitely key. I mean, their forwards need to step up, but um, I think Hirokoski – she looks good. She looks in form. And um, if she can put in a couple of good performances, um, she turned 37 last month. Let's not forget. Um, I don't think age in the women's game is as much of a factor. You know, we, we see Jocelyn the Rock for Team Canada and some older players, um, on the, the vets for Team USA. Um, so here, Koski has one goal and four assists already. So I think she's looking really good. And so maybe the two vets between Swiss, um, Switzerland and Finland are going to be the keys to watch for me. I love Hirokoski's game. Man, especially when you look at it, right? Hirokoski's in her now 16th world championship, right? That's one of those, Incredible. that's just, it's it's a crazy number, but it's just sort of shows, you know, how well she's played to get to that point, how she's she's made her sacrifices to get there. And now she's, one of the staples of the Finnish team. And I mean, you might disagree with me here, but I think when we look at it, the older that we see in the women's game, just the more physical they get, whether that be LaRock, who I think has now taken five, <laughs> six penalties so far, seems like it's a penalty a game for her, but really like that's how they need to play, right? Because they, they've sort of lose a little bit of that step, but it just shows that she, she's able to adapt. She's able to play to, to her strengths. And I think it's really impressive to see it. And I'd love to know sort of who you think is going to end up taking this one in the quarters. Um, I think if I had to pick, I'm going to say Finland. Um, I think the lack of offense for Switzerland has been, you know, a little less than what we, the lack of offense has been more than we expected. So less offense for Switzerland. And I think Finland is kind of holding steady. Um, I would expect to see them come through that game. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you as well. I think I think it'll be a lot tighter than we what we expect, Maybe. especially with Andre Brandley and net for the Swiss. I think she'll be a really key factor in that game, whether or not the Swiss even have a shot to win it. And and I think you know when we look at it, Finland has played well. 
especially they've, they've sort of looked like a team that started off really rough and each game they're getting better and better. So I am curious to see if, if that trajectory is going to continue as they make their way through the playoffs here. I think if, if they sort of fall off the ledge, it might be problems real quick for them. We'll sort of see that off that opening puck drop. I think if Finley can come out hot, I think they'll have no problem. But now let's take a look now at the second game between the Czechs and the Germans. Uh, I'd love to know who you think is sort of the key player on the Czechs that's really going to sort of lead the rush here uh, and, and help Czechs yeah. to make a, have a really good shot against a, a tough German team we've seen in Group uh, in Group B, winning the top spot. The A3-B1 matchup is never a guarantee yeah. either way we look at it. So I'd love to get your thoughts on uh, the Czech-German matchup. Yeah, this is an interesting one. And um, I'm not picking like the obvious player. Um, I'm trying to pick somebody that, like we call it an X factor. Maybe you're not like focused solely on them. But I'm going to go with the young superstar, Adela Sapovalivova, Sapovalivova, who turns 18 in May. She's only 17, and she did win the um, silver medal with the Czech U18 team um, this year. And if she is able to medal in both of those tournaments, she will be, um, I think, the fourth. No, the, she'll be the fifth. There are four players that have done that. Um, Poulin, Tapani, and then um, two other players from Finland, Lightning and Vanika back in 2019 when they uh, picked up silver. Um, so if Shapovali Vova is able to medal, she's going to make history. And either way, she's been somebody that, you know, is making a strong, strong impression, just impressing everybody with her offense. So I would watch for her since they're missing um, Razova. Um, on the offense so if she can come through I and and put in a goal or two in this game I think the checks will be will be um, the the winners in that one yeah for sure and I don't know if you saw the report from Ian Kennedy too but uh, Katarina Mirozova has a, an outside chance to return not just for the quarterfinals but especially as we move along in this tournament which would be which would be a huge pickup if the checks can get through this round get her back for a really key game against whether that be Canada or the US it would be an absolutely electric uh, matchup for them and now let's talk about Germany the team that's really sort of come out of nowhere in group B you know uh, most people had them in that second third spot in group B and now we see them, you know, top spot in Group B, a really, really impressive performance over Sweden. Do you think that they're going to be able to overcome the checks in this one? And, and who's really the player that you're going to look towards to for them to be able to make that move? Yeah, I I purposely didn't want to pick a goaltender for every team because obviously they can be the X factor. They can be the difference makers. Um, but for Germany, I just have to look at Sandra Absreiter. Uh, she's been terrific. Two goals against so far in three games. I think she's really propelled them to the position that they're in uh, with, you know, a surprising victory. Um, she's got she's got a 973 safe percentage and um, 0.67, um, two goals against in three games. So that's her goals against average. And, yeah, she can be the difference maker. It's basically going to be the um, – Czech offense, you know, versus the German steady defense and goaltending. And if she can pull off a great effort like she has, you never know. You could see an upset. Um, I'm happy to hear that Mrazova might be back. That could be a huge difference. That could cancel out, you know, any hope for the Germans. But it's going to be abstrider for me. Yeah, and we look at it, right? 3-0, and been in every real key performance that Germany's had to win in this tournament. And I, I think there's no nobody else that we'd look towards than the goaltender for a team that's looking to take out a major upset here, right? When we look at it, Germany wasn't expected to do that much in this tournament. But now it's it's a real possibility, in my opinion, that they could overcome a team in Group A and, and really make a mark at this tournament. So I'd love to get your thoughts here. Who's your winner in this one uh, between the Czechs and the Germans? I mean, realistically, you have to go with Czechia um, just if everything plays out. But this is why the quarterfinals, to me, are the most exciting round um, because it's lose and go home. And if you win, you're guaranteed two more games. You either play in the gold medal game or the bronze medal game. So the stakes are huge. And, I mean, if Germany could pull an upset, it would be historic. But, you know, everybody has a soft spot for the Czechs and Carla McLeod and wants to see them kind of break through to that next level. So I'm going to go ahead and pick them. 
And I'm going to go the other way from you. I'm going to take Germany, okay. actually, in this one. I have a feeling that Abstrider is going to put up another impressive performance and really steal this game from the Czechs. They've sort of been a team that's lost their way a little bit. They had a really impressive performance against the Swiss. And of course, they started off really strong against Finland, sort of two rough games. And we'll see sort of the Czechs are a team that like to play physical, right, when we look at it. So we'll see if they're able to sort of the refs are going to put their whistles away or if they're going to call a lot. I think if the refs are going to call a lot, the Czechs are going to have some problems here because the German power play has been looking pretty decent lately. So we'll see if they can continue that success. But we'll now move on to, in my opinion, my favorite game, this is between Canada and Sweden. And when we look back to last year's tournament, this game was, I'd say, a lot closer, if you want to say that, for than sure. a lot of people expected, mm -hmm. making it to overtime, 3-2 victory for Canada, 54-14 to 14 were the shots, so it wasn't like Sweden played a dominant performance, but at the same time, right, when we look at it, that's the beautiful thing about hockey is it's really anyone's game. I'd love to get your thoughts. Let's talk, let's talk Sweden first. Who's your biggest player that you're looking for to really help them in this big upset? Yeah, I mean, the you know, the round robin loss to the U.S. left Canada with a much more difficult opponent, in my opinion. And even though the Swedes have been maybe underperforming just a little bit, like you said, last year um, with um, Emma Soderberg standing on her head, this is like a little bit nerve wracking for Team Canada for sure. Um, I'm going to look at another youngster, Hilda Svensson. Um, she, let's see, she had eight points in the uh, U18 tournament and she's going to Ohio State next season. She's already got three goals, two assists, five points in this tournament, and she doesn't turn 18 until August. Um, so a young team, um, some potent offense that you never know could could make a showing and like you said last year's game was you know just much much tighter and much more nerve-wracking than the canadians probably hoped and i wouldn't be surprised if something similar happens so i think someone like svensson could be a key they're going to need some some offensive push for sure for sure and five points in four games right that's those are the kind of players you're looking for in that big game where it's it's going to be a tight game, in my opinion. I think when we look at it, Sweden has to play a tight game. They have to play well on defense. Because if they're going to let go chance for chance with Canada, in my opinion, they don't have a shot in this game. But if they can play a strong defensive style, like we've seen with some of the other teams that have put Canada for a little bit of a rough ride. You know, you look at the Czechs. Yeah. Sure, the penalties sort of killed them in the end, but they played a really impressive game. The U.S. played a really strong defensive game as well. So we'll see if Sweden is able to sort of perform that defensive style that's really caused Canada some problems in this tournament so far. And now let's talk about the powerhouse with Canada, right? Team that's unfortunately lost because of a poor tripping call okay. so i'm gonna i'm gonna put oh, the gonna windy go Canada there, fan okay. away here <laughs> but at the same time one sort of mistake in that one yep. led to the u.s winning put them the second spot in group a having to play a tough matchup in, in sweden so who's your key player that you're looking for in this game canadian fan as well and um so i Looking at an X factor, for me, someone like Emma Malte, um, who's been playing with that PWHL Toronto line, so to speak, with Nurse and Spooner, she has shifted around a little bit, but that's basically the spot that she's been in, and she has two goals already. She is a firecracker. She's a difference maker. She can kill penalties. Uh, she's showing you know, a little more clutch scoring than what we've seen with her on the national team in the past, but... She is just a fan favorite, and if she can, you know, step up and show some of that offense with those other two, I mean, we need Natalie. We we need Natalie Spooner to to make a showing as well. She's been good, but um, Malte has shown up already. So I think if she can continue that performance, she could be the X factor and uh, you know help Canada come through that that game. For sure. And I think another player that we should really be looking at is Renata Fast, right? When we saw her yesterday or two days or whenever the U.S. game was, that one yes. right off the top, absolutely just bodying Kendall Coyne Schofield. And Love it her. set a tone early. And you saw it throughout the entire game, you know, they're going to be playing a physical style. That's what Canada needs to do to be successful. You know, they're going to be able to sort of throw the body when they need it, but at the same time remain disciplined enough to stay out of the box and capitalize on opportunities when they get them. Yep. She's another key player. Okay. Can I let's... make a quick comment about Renata Fast? Because I, I, I love her. She is probably my favorite player. And seeing that hit on Kendall Coyne, I do love Kendall Coyne, but, you know, that was like 
let's set the tone. She's played a lot more physical this year with Laroc in Toronto. They've both been great. Crossing double fingers that they don't get hurt, that nobody gets hurt. But you're right. Um, that deep pair is is key for Canada. Just almost goes without saying. For sure. I mean, just, you know, as you said, right, it's all about how, what the tone gets set at the start of the game. If you're going to play scared, the whole game will be played scared. If you can set it off the top that, you know, we're better than you and we're going to show it then of course it's, yeah, that's how it's going to play out. Right. So we'll see in this one, uh, Sweden, Canada, I'd love to get your thoughts. Who's your winner. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I just have to pick Canada. Um, you know, they're going to need, you know, they've had trouble with Sweden historically and uh, for whatever reason, you know, they sort of um, all out attack and then, the defense that just hangs on for Sweden. So hopefully they can get a couple goals and just sort of cruise and not have such a nail biter, but you have to go with Canada for sure. Yeah. I understand. agree with you there. It's hard to pick anyone but Canada, but of course, you know, Sweden's still a team, young team, and you really never know, right? They can have a really solid game and sort of put a little bit of a scare into Canada. And we've seen Canada play scared in this tournament so far, and it's been a really rough riding for them. So if they can, if Canada can find their game early, there's no doubt Canada will take it. But if they do play a little bit timid off the top, you know, they're scared to throw the body a little bit. I think Sweden has a shot in this game. So never count Swedes out in this one. But Canada, in my opinion, still is the favorite. Yeah. Now let's talk I, about think, the I, I think Canada has um, gotten stronger each game. Sorry. Um, I think Canada has gotten stronger each game. You know, they, they've played a more difficult opponent, which has probably um, helped them out. So, you know, that I think that they're they're hitting their, their stride at the right time. For, for, for sure there. And I mean, we've seen it, right? They started off with... Uh, I wouldn't say their best game and yep. their final game against the U S was in my opinion, at least the best game we've oh, seen them play one of the, yeah. night and day difference between that first game and that last game. So yeah. if they can play anything like that last game, they're going to have some pretty good success in this tournament. Yeah. Just a matter of which Canada shows up. Consistency has been a problem playing the entire 60. So we'll see nonetheless, what goes on there. But now let's talk about the U S and Japan game. And I'm going to start this one off because and when you look at it, right, U.S. and Japan, sure, it's going to be a blowout. But I'm really looking for Japan in this one, too. And I'm a big fan of the trap-style defense. People on the channel know that. And that's one of the things Japan does really well is cause problems for teams like the U.S. We saw it in that Czech game, how Japan, or sorry, the Czechs, rather, were able to sort of quell the U.S. US's offense by trapping that middle of the ice because the US likes to get those flashy type goals, right? Where you're, And if you're shooting from the outside, it's a lot easier for your goalie to save. So we'll see in this one sort of how Japan fares. If they're able to shut down the U.S. offense, especially early, Japan has struggled to score goals, but in all their games, it's been a really tight game, minus a, minus probably the Sweden game and one of the other ones. But of course, when we look at it, right, what you're looking for out of Japan is can they keep this game close? Can they keep it close enough to stay within striking distance? And I think if they can do that, the U.S. isn't in for a complete easy ride in this one, but I'd love to get your thoughts here, uh, sort of the two players you're looking for from U.S. and Japan, and I'd love to know sort of what your thoughts are there. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Um, I mean, on paper, it looks so one-sided that, yeah, everything would have to go right for Japan, but, you know, things like that can happen and have happened. Um, you're right, playing um, kind of that bend without breaking defense, if they can hang around and keep it 0-0, zero, zero, start to plant a seed of doubt. You just never know. Um, so my players to watch, um, and I'm, you know, trying not to pick the obvious one, but um, for the USA, I have my eye on Abby Murphy. Oh my gosh. What, I mean, kind of similar to Emma Malte, but like even more so if that's possible, she is a disturber. She gets under everybody's skin. She has incredible offense. And she has attitude. If you saw the interview, I mean, she just has a chip on her shoulder right from puck drop. And so if someone like that kind of gets their rhythm going and those young players start to come through it, you know, it, it could be really dangerous. It could be a blowout. I mean, it could be like nail biter zero, zero until the third period, or it could be that some of those young players get on the board and, and start to put Japan away. Um, as far as for Japan, I'm going to look at somebody like Haruka Toko. I don't know if that's an off the board pick. She's, um, you know, contributed some offense for sure. And um, she had had great season in the SDHL. 
And someone like that, you know, you could pick a Connie Shiga, of course, but they're going to need a goal, right? So let's say they score the first goal. Someone like Toko with her experience could step up and, you know, make history, score like a goal against the U.S. and keep Japan in it and keep it interesting. You know, selfishly, I would love to see that happen. I'd love to see a really good game here. Yeah, for sure. And, and we think about it, right? They started off this tournament with the loss to China. And from there, it looked like they were out of the, they they had a shot to get knocked out of the tournament mm -hmm. after being in Group A just a year ago. But of course, we've seen it time and time again. Japan finds their way. And sure enough, they won the game that they had to. It was a nail biter, especially when they had to play China and Germany. But they made their way through. And how great would it, of a story would it be from a team that looked like they're about to get relegated to come back and beat the big bad USA? Uh, I would like to thank you first off for coming on today, CB. Really appreciate it. Sure. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That is Game Day Hockey, as well as follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Thank but you. with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like you're subscribing, tell all your friends. Leave a comment down below your thoughts on the Women's World Championship Playoff Preview. Until next time, see you.